Well, good morning again. It is, uh, it is definitely, as usual, as always, it is a privilege and an honor to be able to stand before you this morning and uh, worship together and proclaim the Word of God. And uh, as we, uh, oh, let's go back one more, one, let's go back real quick, uh, there we go. And as we, uh, as we begin, as we, uh, uh, you know, continue with this sermon series, this idea that we're, I'm trying to put forth about thinking big, thinking big about God, thinking big about ministry, just, just thinking big about ourselves and, and, and our place in the kingdom this year, I always want to keep before us the, the fact not the opinion, not the, not the hope, but the fact that we serve a risen Lord. That of all the religions, all the religions that have ever been thought of or conceived or contrived in the world, we know, we know that our God is real and our God is the creator of this universe if we knew none other, no other thing about him than that he came to this earth, lived, died, and was raised by his power. If we knew nothing but that, we would know that our God lives, our God is real. There's no, nobody else can make that claim. Nobody else can take you to an empty tomb. But we can. And that is, that is reason to celebrate. And that is cause to worship. And so as we continue this thinking big, we're going to be talking about the ministry. Because last week I talked about thinking big about ministry in 23. So this week we're going to start a mini-series about the Holy Spirit and the ministry of God's Holy Spirit. And one of the things that, that a, a question that I got asked by a beautiful young lady last week was, you're going to have to, to talk more about ministry because she was saying, look, when I think of ministry, I think of what you're doing, you know, up here preaching and being the minister and, and ministry. And so what I'm afraid is that we pigeonhole the idea of ministry so that only certain people are the ones who do that thing. But that's not the case. Everyone has a ministry. God has, has a plan, has a goal, uh, uh, an intention for every one of us to minister uh, to, uh, to his kingdom and those outside of his kingdom in some way, shape, or form. And what we are to do is to listen intently, to ask him questions, seek those answers to find out exactly what that ministry looks like. For some of us, it's obvious. For others, it's less. But, but the responsibility remains that as we come into the kingdom, it, we are to be at work, to get to work in that kingdom. The Bible's replete with examples of that. The, the fields are ripe for harvest. There, there's work to be done. There's ministry. And so the first thing before we can, can figure out where we are most productive we have to be listening and able to hear the voice of God, and that is this ministry of the Holy Spirit. And in, uh, in John chapter 14, starting in verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, you'll obey what I command. He just comes right out and says, If you, if you love me, and remember last week, one of my prayers was that God teach us how to love you. Because I'm afraid that we, we talk about that a lot, and, and we, we sing about that a lot, about how much we love God, but do we, do we really down deep know what that means and how that feels and what that does to us? And I think a very valid prayer is, God, teach me what it means, what it looks like, what it feels like to love you. I mean, I know what it, what it feels like to love my wife. I know what it feels like, what it looks like to love my daughters, to love my sons. I mean, I even know what it, I even know what it means and how it, how it feels and, and what it looks like for me to love Grant. But those are, those are all people right here that I can see and experience and interact with and talk to. And, and that's easy. It's easy to interact with, with people and our families, but, but not so with God. Not so. We, there, there's more work involved because we're physical interacting with the supernatural. So the ministry of God's Holy Spirit is, is so important. He says, look, it, so if you love me, 
You'll obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Who's that other counselor? He said, well, I'm glad you asked. Let's keep reading. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept them, Him because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He lives within you and will be in you. So Jesus says, look, the Holy Spirit of God is going to come. When, you know, if you love me, I'm going to leave. God's going to send his Holy Spirit, and, and he, it's going to come upon you, and, and he's going to be this miraculous, mysterious, supernatural force in your life that causes things to happen on your behalf and causes you to act on his behalf. So just, just think about that for a second. The Holy Spirit of God, I, I mean, the... the <laughs> the God of the universe spoke and nothing became everything we see and know. You with me so far? Now, I don't know about you, but personally, my mind, pff, blown. Okay, so the, the God of the universe, his spirit, his equal part of himself spirit, indwells each one of us I, I mean how, how are we supposed to act knowing that well again glad you asked because there's there's a lot on the subject but until we understand the importance and pursue with that same level of importance the ministry of God's Holy Spirit our own personal ministry will remain a mystery to us and we will be powerless to accomplish it. So the ministry of the Holy Spirit is what we're going to be talking about. And this is a tough one because the supernatural interaction with the Holy Spirit can be tough to navigate from our perspective. I don't know if I've ever said anything more true than that right there. The supernatural interaction, and that's exactly what it is. It is what we're a part of isn't just coming to church and singing snappy songs. And man, that was a snappy one we sang, uh, He Bore It All. I love that song. It, that's one of those where, I mean, can't you just hear like some tambourines and maybe, well, never mind, I'll get, uh, elders are getting emails as I speak. But what I mean, it, but it's more than just coming and singing snappy songs and praying, you know, uh, and and just being together and 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 that sort of thing and and fellowshipping. There's a supernatural interaction that goes on, especially here, especially in this, because we're all vessels of God's Holy Spirit, right? And when we come together, there's even more of that interaction. But it, it it's it's tough to navigate, isn't it? But, but nevertheless, we find ourselves in need of navigating it. One of the things I, I shared, I have meant to bring this up here today, I shared with, uh, with the teenagers. They seemed to think it made sense, so I'm going to share it with you. If it didn't make sense, I appreciate you telling me that, by the way. Every one of you has got one of these, right? Most of us. It's a phone. Uh, oh, look, that's my wife. Isn't she beautiful? I mean, how does that end up with this I have no idea but there's my wife on my phone my by screen and then if I if I touch this this right here nothing happens well that happens I don't know what that just did hold on but what I really want to have happen is all my apps to come up right so what I do is I hit this little button down here oh look at this like magic all my apps came up and so if you look right here on this, like see right where her right eye is, where Vic's gorgeous hazel right eye is? Well, if I touch, well, oh, oh, see, if I touch that, nothing really happens. But if I come over here and I touch that, it opens up Get Upside where I get discounts on gas. How does that work? Can anybody in here explain to me how... When I, uh, right there, if I touch the screen, something happens. But right here, when I touch the screen, nothing. How does that work? I don't know, 
but I figured out how to operate within this reality even though I don't know all the details. But you know what I had to do? I had to spend time with this thing. I had to work on it. I had to, I had to call my kids and ask them some questions. You know, I had to, had to seek the advice of others on how this mystery works. And you know what they tell me? Like, Dad, Dad it's, it's, communi- it's going into outer space. Just, just relax. Just give it some time. All right? It's communicating with a satellite right now. Just relax. I, I, I don't know. It's a mystery wrapped in a riddle inside an enigma. But I still know how to use it because what was my question in the very first? How interested in God are you? Well, I'm real interested in how this works because it makes life easier and I get those gas discounts and I can listen to whatever music I want to and I can take pictures and I can send those pictures and I can go onto Facebook and I can find out everything Steve's doing, you know, and all the things and every, all this other stuff, right? And I'm really, really interested in how this works. And so I apply myself and I ask my sons and my daughters and other people. I'm interested in it. But it's it's tough. But we still do it. This is tough. It's hard. It takes effort. It takes advice. It takes seek. but, but But it's something that if we are going to be kingdom citizens, and kingdom citizens are not just church attenders, they are moving and working and, and, and expanding the, 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 the boundaries. The gates of hell cannot resist us. That's the kind of people through the ministry of God's Holy Spirit. And see, the ministry of God's Holy Spirit has everything to do with listening to the voice of God. And this is not always easy. Listening to the voice of God is not always easy from our perspective because there's so many competing voices. And there's so much that that we, you know, so many uh, uh, things that we can think about and, and, and so much mystery around it. And so what one person says, well, God told me this, and another person, well, I heard this. And and listening to the voice of God, hearing God's voice can be difficult. I mean, I remember as a kid, um, and and I tell you, when I tell these stories like this, my my kids literally think I grew up like Little House on the Prairie. I mean, they they think the, the 70s and the 80s were just, you know, candlelight and horseback, you know, just covered wagons. Because I did things like I listened to baseball games on a AM radio under the covers at night, you know, because I was supposed to be asleep in bed. I'm listening to uh, the, the I'm listening to the Atlanta Braves broadcast out of Atlanta in Birmingham, Alabama, and I've got this little transistor radio, and I'm listening to it. And sometimes it's hard to pick up those stations. Remember, remember it's hard, and uh, uh, and and I remember a couple of times thinking. It, what, what am I, is that a home run? Oh, no, no, he struck out. Oh, oh what, you, you know, I, you know, because you're, you're, they're static, and, you know, and you're listening, and like, you know, you're, and then all of a sudden you hear Hank Williams, and no, 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 that's not it. Hold on, go back up, go, go. But it, it's, it's tough, and you could think something's going on like a home run or a base hit when it's really a strikeout, and because they're at the, they're, it's an away game, and you hear the cheering, and you're only, you know, nine years old, and you can't remember, you know, are we playing at Fulton County Stadium, or are we at, the, you know, are we in Cincinnati right now? And you hear the cheers, and the home team, and we won, only to find out tomorrow in the paper, you know, the Reds won. Because communication can be tough. Communication is complicated. And we have to at least admit that before we can get better at it. We have to at least admit that communication with God is difficult from our perspective. Or we'll never get better at it. And we can't be content to not get better at it. We can't. Because the stakes are too high. The, the stakes are just too high. You see, 
I'm afraid that, that we, when it comes to kingdom work, you know, think about it like uh, any, any deer hunters. Anybody deer hunters? Yeah, I like to hunt deer. You, uh, you a stalker or a, do you sit in a stand or do you go stalking? Oh, okay. But most of the time, we treat deer season, deer hunting, like in a, in a deer stand and just hope something comes by we get to shoot. Is that how we treat our ministry, our kingdom work? We just, we, we're gonna go, I'm going to do my life the way I want to do it, and I'm going to wait, and maybe somebody will walk by, and I'll just, you know, be able to tell them about something Jesus-y. Or, are we in tune with our surroundings and, and with our Heavenly Father through His Holy Spirit, and we are on the prowl? I mean, we're on offense. I mean, we're out there, we're looking, listening. There's two different ways to do this. One is, is way more highly effective than the other. One involves, you know, sometimes a, little, a lot of luck, and the other is a whole lot more intentional. But unless we can admit that this communication with God, that hearing his voice is, is A, necessary, and B, complicated, we won't get better at it, and we need to get better. So we have some questions. Ooh, I didn't mean to do that. We have some test questions that we need to be able to answer. You see, God wants to test what we hear. He says, test the spirits. What you hear, uh, you know what, because the reality is there are competing voices out there. Satan, all he wants to do is get you to listen to another voice. Most of the time it's our own voice. And he wants us to hear that and, and, and think that that's God, or at least Godly, so that we do exactly what we want to do and we candy coat that and, and, and uh, rationalize it, and that's what we're going to do. But there's some questions that God is, he offers us. In order to, to hear his word, because in, before we're ever ministered to by God's Holy Spirit, and empowered by God's Holy Spirit to go into the world and, and make disciples and to expand the kingdom, we have to be able to discern and listen and hear. And the first question is, does what I, oh, I had a little typo there, need to capitalize I. Does what I hear align with Scripture? You see, one of the things that we can't be is people who are led by the Holy Spirit and what we hear without ever investigating or testing exactly what it is that we are listening to. You see, the fact of the matter is that God's voice will never, ever contradict God's word. The, the voice we hear, the sound in our head, the, the leadings that we, that we have will never, ever contradict what he's written down for us. Now, let me tell you something. There is way, way more information about God out there than what's in here. And we know that because the Bible says there's way more that we could write down, but it's just too much to write down, and the world would not be able to hold the volumes. So there's way more out there to know than what is just in here, but it's all contained within the parameters set out in this. Does that make sense? Now we can learn a lot about God by looking around at the, at, at the world that we live in and observing each other and all this kind of stuff. And, and it's not explicitly written down, but it's within these parameters. It's within these definitions. The character of God is defined in here, but it's not confined in here. The scripture, studying scripture, I mean, that's why he wrote things like 2 Timothy 2 and 15. He says, look, uh, you know, I, I, I want you to study. I want you to do your best to read and understand and, and correctly handle the word of truth. You know, uh, versions say rightly dividing. The, the language in 2 Timothy, it's, it's masonry language. Where, where he's talking about this masonry and you have this brick that's got to go in a wall. And so what you got to do is you got to, you know, shave it down, ca carve it down, and, and, and place it where it goes. And so he says, what I want is for you to study so that your understanding of God can be molded to fit exactly how it's supposed to. So you know, you know God, you know things that he would say 
and things that he would never say. Now, one of the things I, I, I got to tell you is that working out in the, in the, having a secular job outside of the pulpit is, is, a, uh, is a, as you know, it's a very worldly experience. And in my position with my company, I go out into the field, I'm out of town most, most weeks, as y'all know, and I, because of what I have to do, getting people back on track and fixing offices that are not doing, a lot of times, I don't make a lot of friends in those offices because I have to hold you accountable to the procedures and the processes that we're doing. And when you're handling, you know, four to $17 million worth of, business that's kind of a big deal and so sometimes people are mad at me because of the job I have to do now one of the things I pride myself on is you might not like what I'm saying but you cannot argue with the way I'm saying it and I've had people go to my boss and tell them things that I've said and he came in this office, and he was rude, and he, was, he said, you know, filth, flarn, filth, blah, 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 right to my face, and and, da, 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 and I don't appreciate it. You know what my boss says? Shane didn't say that. What? I know him, and he doesn't talk like that. I mean, it's awkwardly, it's awkward to having conversations in the office when everyone else is using you know, this word and that word and these two combined and that one, and I'm over here, well, you know what, that's just, that's just force hockey. You know, I mean, darn it, guys. Can we just, you know, get it together in here? I, I mean, I'm literally Mr. Rogers in there, and everybody else is just, you know, whatever. And, and, but they know Shane doesn't talk like that, guys. So if you want to get him in trouble, at least make up something that's consistent with how he talks. And now, look, I'm not goody two-shoes out there, I promise you. I'm embarrassed of, of, of things, and I'm a, I'm a sinner like everyone else, but I, in the, I feel like in the world of business, we need people who are setting an example. I mean, and you've got to try. I mean, you've got to work hard just to clean up your language because my word it's so prevalent but you see there's things god would never say and it's based on his character but we have to know what he would say and what he wouldn't say so does it, what i hear align with scripture another question does what i oh, boy i'm just does what i hear exalt christ because you see, a lot of times, what I hear is going to exalt something other than Christ. Remember, Satan's in our ear too. Satan and his demons and all of the evil in the world, that, that's in our ear too. And, and so a lot of times, we hear godly-sounding words that exalt something other than Christ, that put something other than, than Christ at the forefront. Maybe the spotlight's going to be on me. Maybe the spotlight's going to be on something other than Jesus. But the, the point of Scripture tells us that everything is about the supremacy of Christ. Colossians 1 and 15, he talks about, look, everything, everything comes from Christ. Everything is about Him. Everything is for Him. Everything's held together. And, and one day, everything we do will point to the supremacy of Christ. And what we are hearing through God's Holy Spirit will always exalt His Christ. Will always exalt His Messiah. Will always draw attention to the saving work of Jesus. To the, to the life, the ministry, the death, the burial, and the, the ultimate resurrection and power of Christ. By the, I mean, the power of Christ compels everything about us. Does what I hear align with Scripture? Does what I hear exalt Christ over everything, over me, over you, over your, your spouse, your children? Everything exalts Christ and then the last thing and they all go together but does what I hear align with scripture exalt Christ and lift up and I meant to write lift up the gospel of grace 
But this guy so involved in Christ says, just typed it wrong. And here I am, where's Jill, making a thing about it. A mistake. Does what I hear lift up the gospel of grace? Because so often, even the the godly sounding things that we hear, that we pursue, that we uh, uh, promote, is really a self-based, self-centered righteousness. And we can get caught up in, in listening and, and explaining and acting like somehow all of this Holy Spirit, all of this uh, God, all of this salvation has everything to do with me and very little to do with the gospel that is His grace. Whether, you know, the, and the scriptures are all over the place in Ephesians where he talks about, look, it is the gift of God, His grace, so that no one can boast. So that no one can point a, a, a spotlight at oneself. So when, when people come to you and, and ask you, you know, why, why don't you talk like everyone else? Why don't you involve yourself in the activities like everyone else? Why don't you do this? Why do you do this? Why do you, uh, you know, why do you take those foster children into your home? Why do you give so much at your church? Why are you so involved? Why are you, instead of, you know what, I'm just a really good person can point to the gospel of grace well because God's grace has transformed me and see when we're hearing that when when we're listening to that that's what can come out of our mouths why 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 can't you go to this party why can't well because I've got this thing I got why can't you be at this practice why can't you be at this well I've got this trip I'm taking the the teens to this thing I'm going to the I'm do uh, you know why are you like that let me tell you about Christ. Let me tell you about the gospel of his grace, the good news about the transformative power of his grace. See, until we're in tune with that, understanding the whole, the ministry that the Holy Spirit is doing within us, until we get that, we're, we're powerless to express ministry to others. Now, over the next few weeks, We're going to talk about and look at specific ways because that was a great question. It's like, what can I, you know, the, uh, what can I do? How can I minister? I mean, it's easy to see how does the preacher minister? I mean, this is, you know, you can fall out of bed and do ministry if this is your job, if this is what you do, if this is what people expect. But how do you do that? If you're, you know, just working a job like the rest of us, that's the question. But it all stems from this. How interested in God are we in 23? I mean, I don't know all the answers about, what, about the Holy Spirit and how he moves and works, but I'm willing to, I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to study. I'm willing to, to meditate and pray and ask. I mean, there was a day when I had no idea how to work this thing. And there's still a lot of stuff in there I don't know how to do. You know it can do this and it can do this other thing. And, you know, it can, uh, uh, you know, yeah. But my level of, of getting good at operating my phone is a direct reflection of how interested I am in knowing how to work that. My level of, of communing with God's Holy Spirit is a direct reflection on how interested in that am I. And it's tough. But one of the things that we talked about in class this morning, and I will end on this, is that the road to less suffering always travels through more suffering. So if you want to suffer less later, we have to intentionally suffer more now. I mean, in anything, whether it's, you know, you want to uh, you want to feel better in your old age, well, you got to suffer now by stretching and working out and eating right and all that. And then there's fewer elements later on. You want to really show out and be good at, a, at, at football well, you, you, you know, and suffer really well in that game? Well, you've got to suffer hard at practice. And you've got to do not only on the field practice, but film study practice and, and uh, in the weight room practice and all that. Suffer. Well, if we want to suffer less in our relationship with God and suffer by not understanding, by falling down, by making mistakes, then we've got to suffer more 
Now, by studying and on our knees and meditating and praying and all of those things, that will cause our flesh, our, our fallen flesh, to suffer because that's not what we want to do in our flesh, is it? What we want to do is watch TV or read that great book uh, you know, about some story that, or whatever. Or what we want to do is, is go and do whatever it is we want to do. But God's calling us if you will just take time to suffer intentionally now. You'll suffer less later. But how interested in God are we in 2030? We'll find out. I'm finding out myself because I'm asking myself that same question every morning the top of my sermon uh, journal page. Every morning I write, how interested in God are you today, Shane? And I write the date. The ministry of God's Holy Spirit is important. It's tough. Communication with God is not easy from our perspective, but it's mandatory. It's necessary. And it's so well worth it. So we're going to sing a song. What's our next song? We're going to go, we're going to sing, All to Jesus I Surrender. Easy to sing, hard to do. Like most of these songs, easy to sing, hard to do, but worth it, well worth it. Do you believe that? We'll sing it out as together we stand and as we sing.